Welcome back to the 40k PR project. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my Shadow Hunter. My Shadow Hunter is going to be currently sitting at 40,651 powering. And here's going to be my stat, and you can just pause the video if you want. But let's appreciate that 100% critical hit. Looks really nice. My head, weapon, and face are going to be fully pearl base crystal all for equipment with movement speed, critical damage, and magic find on all pieces of gear. The reasoning behind movement speed is because it's the Shadow Hunter. Bruh. Use movement speed. And the reasoning I use critical damage instead of attack speed is because I normally use this class on lower portal and also I forgot to reroll whenever it was second stat reroll. So I'm just going to be using critical damage for the most part. And I generally don't use the ultimate ability on this class for the majority of the content that I'm using in this class. So yeah, critical damage is the one that I'll be using. However, if you are main in this class for everything, including bossing, or if you do have low stat, attack speed is going to be better than critical damage because of the ultimate ability is going to shoot faster. And the reasoning I use magic find on all pieces of gear is because of drops. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. That's it, essentially. But yeah, no physical damage on face. I'm already doing enough damage. No maximum hat or face because 1.5 mil HP and 100% critical hit. So no critical hit on weapon, no ring. Speaking of ring, crystal level 4 ring with magic find and tactical seekers ability. Even though I said that I will not be using the ultimate ability, or I don't use the ultimate ability. I have tactical seeker because I was doing DPS testing prior to this recording. So I'm, normally I'm not going to be using this ability on this Shadow Hunter. However, if you want the highest DPS on the class or if you're lower in stats, Tactical Seeker is going to be a really good option for you to use because it does help you out in more DPS and in burning bosses down. A magic find on my ring, obviously because it drops, but energy regeneration is actually a really good option. It might be even the best option for the Shadow Hunter because the Shadow Hunter's ultimate ability obviously just regenerates energy really slowly and the energy regeneration just going to help you out in regenerating your energy a little bit faster, which helps you out in just throwing down a little bit more ult for more DPS. And also for Sun Snare spamming. Sun Snare is a really good ability, especially in Kursko. And with energy regeneration, it allows you to spam a little bit better. So energy regeneration, good option. For me, I would be using Magic Fire. My ally is going to be Animated Joe because of the movement speed buff and the SSP farming character. I want as much movement speed buff as possible. But Ernie is going to be a good option if you want the highest potential DPS. Or if you're low on stats. The banner is going to be the permanent torch and like I just mentioned in the previous video and in, in the introduction video on the 40k PR series, I will be swapping this between all of the characters. So yeah, I'm just going to be using permanent torch on every single class. So that's the only thing that I will be swapping between all of the characters. My food, free range electrolyte crystal, easy 300 lines, super easy to get, always use it. Marshall trailblazing as my emblem, Marshall because of damage, trailblazing because of movement speed, and I'm going to repeat myself every single time use your damaging emblem inside uber 11 because uber 11 is all about burst damage and marshall will help you out in bursting bosses down so always use marshall or arcane emblem depending on the damage type so always use those damaging emblem for crying out loud it is super important and also the other emblem is whatever it suits you for me it's going to be trailblazer because i like to go fast but if you want more burst damage then you can just use the beamer emblem because it does help you out in burst damage six times damage multiplier on one uh, summon that you do spawn it helps out in burst damage on every single class uh, if you need survivability you can use unyielding if you want to spam more ultimate ability then use chronomatic emblem or Celes emblem if you want to spam even more, more stuns there, I don't know. Just use whatever you want. For me personally, Trailblazing Emblem because of movement speed. Conjurer's Crucible Bile is going to be my flask. Since I have over 13,500 magic fire, that pretty much is an obvious pick for me. But obviously, that's the fine vial if you actually need it. And since this is a speed farming class, I will be using the Personal Song Bard subclass. Because of that solid 20% movement speed on tier 9. So good. And yeah, that's pretty much all of my gear. Now for the costume combination. My hairstyle is going to be the Angelic Hood, which is gotten from the Guardian Angel Fate Trister costume, which is normally gotten from the store. My costume is going to be the Crow and Scarecrow, which, whatever the hell the name is, uh, which is going to be a costume for the Shadowy Selection 2020 store pack, which is a store pack from the Shadow Sieve event. I actually made a video about it. If you want to go ahead and check it out, I'll leave it in the description down below. And my weapon style is going to be the Ancient Oricorn, or whatever you pronounce it, which is going to be one of the bow Radiant style from the Radiant Ruin enemies. 
and this is going to be the custom combination that I'm using on the Shadow Hunter. Now, let's move on into my gems. Like I just mentioned in the previous video, I will be scrolling over all of my gems, starting with Water, Air, Fire, lastly Cosmic, and while I explain also the Empower Gem ability in that same order. Starting off with the very first ability, which is going to be Shadow Blitz, the class gem. This one should be pretty obvious, but there's still some player that might think otherwise. Um, I'm just going to be giving a warning right now. I might rant <laughs> on the live commentary portion about this class gem and or no class gem debate. So I'm just going to let you know a warning. If I do rant about this is because this is something that I just find really silly and really, really stupid and just going over the debate whether or not should you be using or not use the class gem ability. So just giving you a fair warning right now. So yeah, this is an obvious pick for me. Ability number two is going to be the explosive epilogue. Really good empower gem ability, especially on this class, since the basic attack doesn't have crowd control, it's essentially single target. And yeah, this does help out in burst damage capability, does help out in crowd control, and with an explosion that does 4.5 times damage multiplier, really good pick on this class. The third ability is going to be Paradise, and I'll see it once and I'll see it again. This is the best empower gem ability out of the regular empower gems. It gives movement speed, damage, crowd control is very easy to proc, so yes, always use Pyre Disc. So that's what I'll be using. And my last ability is going to be Vampire and Vanquisher. And this one is also pretty obvious, movement speed and survivability, that's all I gotta say. Berserk Paddler might be a good option if you want the highest potential DPS or if you're low on stats, since the Shadow Hunter is one of the easiest class to go into Berserk state, so the 750 light. So yeah, I would probably say if you want that, then go ahead and do that and just use Berserk Battler. But for me personally, Vampire and Bank, which is going to be the best option. And yeah, that covers over all of my gems. Now, I will be moving into the live commentary portion, starting with Uber 11 Geo Topside. Right about now. Alright, so let's move on into Uber 11 Geo Topside. Like I just mentioned in the previous video, uh, Uber 11 Geo Topside, the enemies are just the weakest. So I'm just going to start here and then just move on into any of the three elemental worlds and then just going to explain how the character performing all of those content but actually you know what instead of actually going over that because everyone already knows about the shadow hunter and how good this character already is the shadow hunter is just dumb <laughs> it's so good it is arguably the best all-around all class in the game in my own personal opinion it is the best all-around class in the game and i don't think it's even close at this point the reason being is because this character is pretty much top three in every single category that it does maybe the only exception is like del floor clearing that might be the only thing that the character is just kind of lackluster but outside of that pretty much everything else the character is top three dungeon grinding top three easily night like speed farming in general early game top three very easy class to actually just build up probably in my own personal opinion might be the easiest class right now DPS, top 3, is the third highest DPS class in the entire game in terms of potential for Solari and Second Pirate Captain, in case you were wondering. The Shadow Hunter is just top 3, and in some cases, in the majority of cases, Shadow Hunter is going to be dishing out more DPS than Pirate Captain. So, it, for the most part, it's going to be the second highest DPS class in the game behind Solarian. So, a top 3 dungeon grinding character, a top 3 in terms of DPS, and probably the easiest class to actually just use in the entirety of the game. Dude, you actually just have a recipe of a really ridiculously good character. And why is that? Why does it make it so good? It's a character with really good burst damage. Like I just mentioned multiple times, Uber 11 is all about burst damage. Class is burst damage city. It is and everything that it does is just burst damage. Like even the basic attack is a four round burst essentially for crying out loud. So it's burst. It's a burst character that just works so perfectly and to top it all off is a character with ridiculously huge speed 40 percent movement speed buff from the passive ability is no joke and speaking of the passive ability the passive ability is that so yes yeah, just to summarize the passive ability does so many things it shadow marks enemies so you can see them through walls it allows you to do the explosion from the basic attack like you saw right there like that explosion does extra damage on your basic, which is one times damage. You do 5% more damage. You you move 40% faster, like whenever you use a dodge. And to top of all, you also get the seekers for the shadow seekers. So it does so many things. And that's just from the passive ability, where it is something that you are going to be using a lot 
and by a lot i mean all the time and it's something that is going to be there since the beginning of the game so you don't need to do anything it's just going to be there the only thing that you need to do is just do dodges like every eight seconds for a 40 percent movement speed increase which i need to mention that 40 percent movement speed is a lot 40 percent is the movement speed the same movement speed increase that you do get with class gen jubilant song uh which is among the fastest movement speed buff in the entirety of the game uh, and the character does have it just by just pressing the dodge which is something that you were already doing pre-patch uh, the dodge on the shadow hunter is one of the best dodges in the entire game because it grants you a solid forward momentum it's a fast animation and doesn't lower any movement speed especially when you don't jump dodge when you're on the ground it will lose movement speed so don't do the dodge on the ground uh, if you're using shadow hunter jump dodging is just essentially the way to go so make sure to always jump dodge so you don't get stuck like this see that the animation just gets stuck whenever you actually just use uh dodge on the ground just always jump on this character and this character also benefits from jump shooting jump shooting is another movement speed technique that i did talk about briefly in my movement speed or like speed farming video uh, jump shooting is a thing in this game uh, certain characters will benefit greatly from jump shooting uh, as you can tell this is me just running around normally uh, let me just wait until the movement speed buff so this is me running around normally and if i actually just tap shoot oh i actually hit an enemy but if i tap shoot you can actually just see like my character just keeps stopping and stopping but if i actually just jump shoot you can actually see that i barely stop moving around and if i do get movement speed buff you can actually just see that the jump shooting will actually not lower your movement speed at all combine that with a movement speed buff and you can actually just do essentially just drive by and to top it all off the character has one click potential one click potentially means that the character will be able to one shot with one burst on your basic attack for those who don't know whenever you attack with your basic attack you press the uh, basic attack button and it's going to shoot four arrows instead of actually just shooting one this is just me pressing the button once it's going to shoot four arrows each arrow will be doing two times damage multiplier making it a total of eight times damage burst eight times damage multiplier on a burst is more than capable of one shotting enemies which allows you to do the one what i like to call the one click shadow hunter because it's essentially just one click and dies that's just incredibly powerful because it allows you to do insane momentum building like this Bruh. I just have Marshall and just kill enemies and I actually didn't kill because I missed all my shots. But yeah, you can just go ahead and just kill enemies like this and just have ridiculous movement speed potential on this character. Really, really effective in terms of speed farming. That's why like in lower portals, this character is just ridiculous because you can just one click super easily from 40 blocks in distance, which is the range of this basic attack without volatile velocity. Which some people have been saying to use volatile velocity which i think is kind of overkill but 40 block range is ridiculous it's just perfect character essentially just by doing those two things alone a basic attack that does ridiculous range has really high burst it's super easy to use because you don't need attack speed in order to shoot at max you have the fastest basic attack in the game the second longest range in the game uh, behind solarian and so it was before solarian came into the game it was the farthest reach basic attack in the entirety of the game combine that with the fact that the character has a 40 percent movement speed increase and that's just only coming from both the basic attack and the dodge speaking of the basic attack i need to just rant <laughs> a little bit uh, well i don't need to but i'm going to rant in regards to one of the dumbest debates that i've ever heard in my existence in playing this game you know what this deserves my actual vtuber model face hold on hey why the hell was this a debate in the first place i don't know why the non clash and basic attack all of a sudden people were just going crazy oh yes definitely you are doing more damage you pierce through enemies yes you are doing more damage which you already did pre-patch you used to do 2.5 times damage multiplier more than double two and a half times more damage than the class gem version versus right now that you do 3.75 versus the class gems two times damage which again the difference in coefficient is larger but the percentage is smaller so even though the difference on non-class gem and class gem is larger now than it was before and by larger i mean like 0.25 larger the percentages is just smaller because back then 
in order for you to actually match the damage without the class gem, you needed to hit with three arrows versus right now with two arrows and you are already doing more damage with the class gem than without. Combine that with the fact that the non-class gem is shooting at three attacks per second at maximum versus 12 attacks per second with no attacks per gear. Like you're doing less than two times the amount of damage while shooting four times slower. Once again, why the hell was this a debate in the first place? Uh, I'm going to complete this five star dungeon and then just get the face out of here. But if you want to see more of these, I uh, use this on every single live stream. So make sure to stay tuned on all of those live streams. I know I'm plugging myself on a 40k PR video. Sue me. That's essentially the little rant that I just wanted to go over. Uh, the Shadow Hunter is. I don't know why was that even a debate in the first place. It's just so incredibly stupid <laughs> to say the least basic attack should you use it with or without the class gem use class gem all the time for god's sake <laughs> i already explained the reasoning why is it better if you want to use it for fun more power to you use it for fun but if you want effectiveness no don't even don't even try so anyways i'm getting myself out of here so let's just Damn, that is just a huge lag. But yeah, I'm getting myself out of here. Uh, so yeah, if you want more of this VTuber model, I use it on every single live stream. So stay tuned for all of that. I don't use it for commentary. I just wanted to just use it for this commentary. Anyways, let's move on. Let's continue with the Shadow Hunter. Outside of the basic attack that makes the character so absolutely ridiculous and obviously the dodge, the other thing that just makes the Shadow Hunter really, really good is obviously the fact that the character has ridiculously huge burst dps and not to mention dps in general but the burst dps on this character is absolutely ridiculous uh shadow seekers an ability that a lot of people don't use but if you're a newer player please for the love of god use this ability your one your one shotting capability is just dumb that was a three star boss that got one shot it why is that the case because this ability does nine times damage multiplier with a full shadow seeker because it does damage depending on how many seekers you do have the more Seekers that you do have, the more damage that you're going to do. The Seekers at maxed out at level 5, which is the only one that I would recommend you to use anyways, it will be doing 9 times damage multiplier times every single arrow. You want to know how much damage that is? 45 times damage multiplier. 45 times damage multiplier. And I don't need to mention that the Shadow Seekers actually do have a critical damage bonus. I don't remember how much it was. I don't know if it was... 25% critical damage bonus or 50%, I think it's 25%. Even if it didn't have critical damage bonuses, because why why the hell would it <laughs> would it need like a critical damage bonus? A 45 times damage multiplier. That is just ridiculous. <laughs> 45 times damage multiplier on one burst on an ability that you can just throw it down and just immediately just keep shooting. Obviously, the setup is quite bad and also the ability can be quite tedious to use. But the thing is, you can literally just run into enemies with your ridiculous movement speed and just activate Shadow Seekers on top of the enemies and it's going to immediately detonate doing that ridiculous amount of damage. Just to give you a proper example, this world boss, I do have three Shadow Seekers right now. I can just go ahead and just throw the Shadow Seeker immediately on top of the enemy, even with three Shadow Seekers. I do believe with three, it does like six or seven times damage. I don't know, it's something along those lines. Not to mention, it does have the critical damage bonus, so it's doing more than the actual multiplication on the ability. Combine that uh, with the fact that the ability is super easy to activate. Like It's an ability that you should be using all the time. I don't use it because I don't need to, but it's going to benefit me like crazy if I use this ability. Even with three Shadow Seekers on uh, my stat, that's, that's more than enough to almost one shot at that point. And then if we move on into the other abilities, Sun Snare. Another ability that got buffed to hell. I don't know why the hell was this an ability that needed this amount of buffs. I, I think the damage increase, I, I think it was fair. But the proximity increase that it got is just dumb. For those who don't know what is going to be the Sun Snare, your trap. This is uh, the only ability that the Shadow Hunter remained uh, out of the three abilities, like the first, second, and ult. So this is the only ability that is just still old. But the thing is, it got buffed like crazy. To the point that you can just go ahead and just hit enemies as soon as they spawn. And if you do have enough damage, you can actually just one-shot enemies with the Sun Snare. I don't know if you can actually just one-shot 
regular enemies at max stats, even if it doesn't one shot like those curse gold enemies, it's still going to one shot kill 30 enemies immediately. And I can do that right now. Like me personally, I can kill kill 30 enemies like swarm uh, curse goals with one sun snare and marshal. It's just ridiculous because it immediately just allows you to do so many crazy things. That was Shadow Seeker, by the way. That was a disgusting one shot. <laughs> it also gives you a shadow mark. And even if you don't kill the enemy, just hitting an enemy with the shadow mark, it will allow you to just increase your shadow seeker much quickly because uh, you are shadow mark an enemy and if you don't if you remember about the passive ability if the enemy is shadow mark you can immediately just another shadow seeker one shot by the way uh, you can just immediately just get more shadow seeker if you do hit an enemy with with that this is the kill third enemy this is what you can just end up doing yeah just the enemy is just all the way over there it's just going to one shot with just one sun snare and if you do have energy regeneration it will allow you to just actually consistently keep doing that and not to mention on lower portals like uber 10 if that sun snare is one shotting there's no better ability than that one when it comes to dealing with curse call enemies because you are already just dishing out, uh, what is it, like 3.5 times damage to all enemies as soon as they spawn and they are just going to die. And even if they don't die, they're going to be stunned for like 2 seconds or something like that, while being shadow marked by the passive ability doing 5% more damage. And to top it all up, giving you the explosion and giving you seekers, it's just a really, really good ability that you should be using all the time. Sunsnare really really good ability and now let's move on into the sacred arrow ability sacred arrow ability is going to be your ultimate ability um what a lot of people have been saying is like they like the old arrow of the goddess ultimate ability more and i kind of can understand why that ability was just dumb if you actually did hit an enemy uh, with the arrow of the goddess you know a shadow mark enemy i believe it did like 55 times damage multiplier <laughs> which is stupid to think about all right, so yeah, we're cut right here. I totally didn't lag out like, like crazy on my Exos app and I totally didn't die. Anyways, the Arrow of the Goddess was just a dumb ability. It did 55 times damage or 55.75 or something like that. Uh, a potential damage multiplier on an ability that was just an instant arrow with 50 plus block range. Arrow of the Goddess was really, really good. When they changed that to the Sacred Arrow, which is what we have right now, a lot of people were just saying that they missed the old ultimate ability, which is kind of weird because everyone complained about that ultimate ability not working like half the time. That's the last time I remember. Actually, <laughs> I do remember that vividly for the very few people that actually did use the Shadow Hunter, because once again, barely anyone was using the Shadow Hunter. <laughs> Anyways, Sacred Arrow is actually a really, really good ability. A lot of people are just underrating this ability um, because the ability does obviously feel really, really bad. But did you know that you can actually just dish out some dumb burst damage? That's the reason I have this world boss uh, just alive. This is a bonus HP world boss. You can tell by the blue glow. Um, it's a bonus HP world boss. The secret arrow, what it does is you press the ability, you're going to throw down an arrow. If you hold down the ability, you're going to keep throwing down the arrow until you run out of energy. That's the reason a lot of people use energy regeneration on the Shadow Hunter, because you can still regenerate energy, but on a much slower pace. And a lot of people immediately assume that you have to use the sacred arrow just in that way, just holding down the arrow. But in reality, you can actually just use it for burst damage capability. Obviously, use the sacred arrow holding it down for DPS, for bossing for the leviathans and delves and even this under upland five stars like for those yes just hold it down but if you're using it for dungeon grinding if you're a newer player or something like that you can do stuff like this actually just go ahead and go like this throw down a sacred arrow and just attack with basic it will help you out in burst damage capabilities why is that the sacred arrow does i do believe it's 6.5 or 5.5 times damage multiplier and then it does a damage over time of 4.5 i don't remember the first damage over time that you are going to hit on the sacred arrow it will apply immediately as soon as you do hit an enemy with the ult and to top it all off the initial contact it also does damage and if you combine those two you are going to dish out ridiculously high burst damage so which allows you to do stuff like this just one sacred arrow 
as you can tell, boss pretty much just die with one sacred arrow. And you can just combine the fact that you can just throw down a sacred arrow and immediately just shoot with your basic attack. That is what it makes the ability pretty good. So yeah, that's essentially the full entirety of the Shadow Hunter. Um, why like everything is just so good. So yeah, this might be a longer episode, a longer rant video. Well, not rant video, a ramble video, because I want to highlight that the character is really, really good. No, it doesn't have weaknesses. It does have one small weakness, and that is going to be in the crowd control department. But once again, you have some snare. Even if you don't have some snare. You kill so fast that crow control probably is not even an issue. Like for curse code like this one, Sun Snare is just going to destroy everything. Even if you don't do it, if you do have explosive epilogue, you're going to help out in burst. If you have pirates, you're going to help out in crow control. And even the explosion from the passive ability does help out in dishing out some extra damage, even though it's not a whole lot, but does help out in dishing extra damage. So yeah, just really, really good. I didn't even go into any of the uber portals or the elemental worlds, but I don't think I need to do so. Because pretty much for me, the whole highlight of the character is just the character's kit. No matter where you at, the character is just going to perform really well. And that's just because all of those things that I just mentioned. Basic attack, really, really good. Really long range, really easy to use, no setup required. Shadow Seekers, one-shotting monster of an ability. Sun's there, like a crowd control, ridiculous ability for Curse Skulls. And Sacred Arrow, a really good burst damage and DPS ability. Do you want anything else on a character? You have crowd control, you have burst damage, you have DPS. You have everything, speed, 40% movement speed increase on a character is already ridiculous. And combine that with all of the upsides that this character has, you have a complete package of a character. It's insane. So I'm going to complete this 5 star and just call it a day. Um, I'm not going to go into the other elemental worlds because I don't need to. The character is going to do exactly the same thing that you're seeing right here. It's going to destroy everything just really, really quickly. Um, and just, oh yeah, Shadow Seeker, oh, boom, one shot. <laughs> That's so dumb. Curse Call, just throw a, a, you know, a Sun Snare and just attack with basic attack. And just kill enemies really, really quickly. Again, two wave Curse Call. Just throw down Sun Snare, just attack with basic attack. And when dealing with bosses, you can use Sacred Arrow. One, two Sacred Arrow, plus basic. You're going to kill everything really, really fast. And yeah, that's just the moral of the story with this character. This has been a 30 minute long recording, actually. Um, combine that with the... Uh, the early portions that is going to be really a uh, really long video i'm going to spend like forever just editing this video anyways that's going to be everything for me so let me know your thoughts and opinions on the character and also let me know in the comment section down below your debate oh god i'm lagging once again please don't 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 yeah expo app is just kind of way too laggy right now and yeah anyways but just let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of the shadow hunter in general where do you see the character ranking amongst your top overall classes in the entire game let me know in the comment section down below and yeah like always thank you for watching thank you guys always leave a like subscribe for more content like this we're on a road to 5k subscriber and thank you for all of the support lately uh with all that being said once again thank you for watching and i hope to see you guys next time take care and keep on hunting this has been the 40k pr video on the shadow hunter see ya